Nine Mobile's newly appointed top signing CEO Alan Fenfield says the goal is to build on the company's strong foundation. But what opportunities does the Nigeria's capital market have for telcos in the market? And I have with me Rotimi Fakajo, who is a stockbroker and capital markets analyst. He joins me on the line for this conversation. Rotimi, let's talk to the opportunities for telcos in the Nigerian capital market. Uh, well, I think the, the, the opportunities are very much. Um, Although the listings that we have had in the market are by way of introduction, we've not already had an IPO that can actually test run the acceptability of those companies of the telecoms in the Nigerian market. But at any point in time, I believe the, market, the Nigerian capital market is waiting for the first telecom that will actually come to be, and uh, which will also prove itself that uh, Nigeria is, is, is where they actually make a bulk of their profit especially for MTN, and as such, uh, I believe that uh, my mobile and other telecoms have a lot of opportunities within the market. So I believe that uh, if they come even by way of introduction and they accelerate the process of coming in with an IPO, I don't really think any, uh, such, uh, such act will be a failure. It definitely will attract the interest of investors within the market. All right, well, let's get into some of the Q1 earnings that we're seeing so far in there. Um, for you, which ones stand out? And I'd like you to speak specifically on Dangote Cement. Well, I think uh, the, the, the Dangote Cement uh, result, uh, is the bottom line is not much different from what um, uh, could, uh, was in the prevailing um, quarter for 2019. But I think uh, when you look critically at the figures, there is a, a deferred tax uh, expense that actually brought into the 2020 Q1 result, which is about 15 billion. So, I did not bring for that. I think we would have seen a much better performance. So, since there will be a receipt of that in Q2, I look forward to a situation whereby the uh, results of uh, that would be better appreciated. Even as it is, as it, with the way it has come, having paid the kind of dividend that they paid, uh, 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 I think, last two weeks. And uh, now that uh, we have we seen the Q1 results, everyone still has confidence that the company is up to start in giving good returns to investors. All right, but we're looking at the market performance for today. We're seeing Dangote Cement coming on, on that list as well. GT Bank is on that list and MTN in there. I'd like to speak to what's driving market sentiments today. Uh, well, I think uh, at, at any point in time, when you uh, uh, assess, uh, do an assessment of the market, many of the prices are still under their uh, right price, the right place that uh, ought to be. So what I'm saying in essence is some of the stocks are well, very well under price. So, uh, and uh, there's still a lot of expectation as to what performance will be. Even irrespective of what effect COVID-19 will bring, I believe that uh, that will be limited to... Uh, to a great extent, the Q2 results. And everyone believes that uh, come Q3, when things begin to start in Q4, then definitely a lot of interest will come into the market more. But for now, what is actually driving the market is the under uh, pricing of the securities as they were. GT Bank has only been steady for some time at about 35, 37 era. And we are still in at 25. Likewise, the uh, Dangote cement has been trending at about 160, 170, and we are seeing it at where it is right now. So it actually holds investors to believe in the potential uh, 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 it, uh, it, it contents of, I mean, the potential in these companies, and that's why I believe that those things are being tied in right now. Right, but very quickly, just for me, I'm just looking at the corporate disclosures from the NSE, and I'm seeing a um, story about FBN Holdings divesting from um, FBN Insurance. What's playing out there? Uh, well, I think, uh, to me, it's quite a uh, dig I mean, uh, digression from what they are made up to believe, because uh, not too long ago, maybe a, a few years back, was when they consolidated their investment in FBN Insurance. And they're uh, coming out now to... Uh, to diversify for me is quite a surprise to the market. But I think uh, they may have looked at it and see that uh, it's more profitable to sell at this time and so that they can be able to con uh, concentrate on more financial uh, 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 activities that is core to their business. 
maybe the uh, the, the, uh, the main bank, First Bank, Nigeria uh, Limited, and the other ones, the, the merchant banking sector and the trustees. So they believe maybe that one will add more value to them. And I think uh, that may be the reason why they are selling the insurance arm. And I think uh, they will be, they, they are not giving all the figures, but I think for them to be doing it to stand up, they definitely have to be at uh, uh, for profit. And I think uh, it's nothing really as a place for them to do.